everybody. Happy Monday. I know it's crazy that it's already like mid April. Yeah, well, it's almost, it was almost over. It's crazy. So today I wanted to come on a little early. I know I told you guys seven, but I wanted to come on a little early because we're going to do some painting with some chalk. And I absolutely love this technique. It's one of my favorite techniques to do. I'm going to get ready to send this over to my VIP group. If you are not in my VIP group, you're going to want to comment VIP below. I always show the finished project in my VIP group. So that is where you'll get to see the finish design. So if you are not in my VIP group, you are not a designer, comment VIP below. All right. So we're going to do the etched butterflies. Yes, they are back. They are in stock and I am excited to actually be able to do them with you guys. So, um, let's do this real quick. Today is the 18th. Crazy, crazy. So I'm going to pull my other phone up so I can see comments as they pop on. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our box frame. And there is these words that come with the butterfly. So we are going to actually put them on this box frame. But we are going to take watercolor paper. We're going to paint with chalk paste. We're then going to take this butterfly, go over top of him, that color with black, cut the butterfly out, and the butterfly is going to go on the corner of our box frame. I'm super excited to do this. I have not done watercolor paper before. I've always done it on the surface, like of a box frame or something like that. I've never done it on watercolor paper. So you guys get to be experimenting with me today. So I'm gonna use a new artisan tool set. I love this set. It's awesome. It's got so many goodies in it. And obviously our paint brushes are reusable because you can clean them. We have like this little tiny, I call it a cleaning tool. It is like um, foam so you can get it wet and kind of use it like a Q-tip. And then we have a really cute little squeegee right here that you can use for details. That just popped right off there. So I'm gonna get these cut with my scissors real quick and we will get started. Obviously you can untie it too. I'm just gonna try and do it the easiest way I can and make it so I can take these guys right off. So. that down. I'll have to use my tool and pinch that. But we are going to paint with chalk. And yes, you can paint with our chalk paste. It is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love that you can paint with it. I love that you don't have to have multiple things to make these craft projects. So I'm going to move you guys down. Okay. So we are, like I said, we are going to paint. We're going to use our bigger brush because First of all, I want to be able to cover this area. So I am a messy chalker. That's why I have these mats. But if you don't have like craft mats like this, you can always lay like wax paper down, um, some kind of barrier down so you don't get this all over your table. But our paste is also, hi, Shawnee. Our paste is also washable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Bumblebee. I have a little bit in a... Um, in a single here if I can get a little bit of that to come out we're gonna kind of mix some paste together so I want the yellow to add to the orange so I'm gonna use some of my orange peel right here and I'm just gonna take a little bit of this with my stir stick and I'm gonna add it in here okay so we are gonna spray this down and make it into a paint. How cool is that, right? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of water. Should've kept the stir stick out. I don't know what I was thinking there. Just grab another one. You can do it with your paintbrush too, but I like to do it with the stir stick because then I don't have to worry about having to rinse it. 
brush out. So I'm just gonna mix this in with the water. I'm actually gonna make it pretty much paint. That's what I'm gonna do with it. You want it watery because obviously it's a water color. You don't want it soupy, soupy, but you want it to look like paint. So like all of these chunks in here, you don't want any of that. You gotta mix that in, even if it just takes a little bit. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I have been tired all day, but once I came in here, my energy level picked up and I was thinking to myself, man, I should have come in here earlier. So it's kind of a yellowy macaroni and cheese kind of color. It's not so bright orange. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. I might add just a little bit more yellow just to give it a little bit more, I don't know, closer to what I think, uh, kind of like a monarch butterfly colors. So yes, you could totally paint with our paste, which is just, I mean, come on guys, that's amazing, right? I think it's amazing. I love it. I love that you can paint with it. So when you're using watercolor paper, you definitely wanna wax the paper before you chalk on it. And we will do that process. So when this is drying, we will chalk on the board. I need a little bit more water. Not too much, cause I don't, like I said, I don't want it soupy, but I want it to look like paint one of these little chunks gone out of it. All right, so we're just gonna take our paintbrush. We're just gonna paint. We have to paint the whole thing because obviously the butterfly is not that big. So we just wanna paint it, get it on there. Just enough to cover that butterfly. You can tell that it's already kind of starting to dry. It's drying pretty quick in here. It's pretty warm in here today. It was so cold out today. It was all rainy and nasty. So I have our heat on. Not too high, not too hot. Now I use watercolor paper that I buy from the craft store. I don't use the cheaper watercolor paper because I like the thickness of this paper. Um, first of all, it protects my surface better if it's not um, super thin. But you guys can get paper at like any store. You can get it from anywhere. I like that color. I think it looks good. And of course we can always dry it with our heat tool. But while it's drying, which it's drying pretty quick, I just want to double check and make sure that the, yes, that the butterfly will fit on it. So I'm just kind of, kind of mix in here. Now see, one of the cool things is, is if, let's say you don't like that yet orange, you want it a little bit, you know, brighter. You can always add other paste colors into it to make it brighter. I like the color and I think it looks great. So I'm gonna recycle that. I'm gonna clean my brush out, let it sit in its water. And while we're waiting, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Let me set it somewhere so it can dry. So these are the etched butterflies. I absolutely love the butterflies. I wanted to demo them. I demoed them and then they went out of stock and I was so upset that they are back. So we are gonna start with this project. So anytime you do a wood surface, you always wanna wax it. So I brought out our wax. This is our wax. It does not have a smell. It actually smells like crayons. It smells like, you know, just crayon wax. So we have these cute little pads that are a wax applicator now. So you just want to make sure that you wax the surface. Why? One, it protects your transfer. And two, it prevents it from bleeding, the paste from bleeding, because wood is porous. It's gonna absorb into that. So you just definitely want to make sure you are waxing. If you cannot get a hold of our wax, we do have other alternatives that you can go and you can get like min wax, finishing wax. You want it in a natural color. Um, but I always recommend using our surface wax because obviously it's designed for our surfaces. So you can actually see it in the light that it's shiny. You can actually feel it that there is a wax on that surface. So we are gonna close that up. 
and we're gonna get ready to buff this real quick. I'm just kind of looking at the paper. So you wanna buff the wax back out. I always let it sit for just a second. And I always use this side that's got the tag to buff it out because then I know, okay, that side I used to applicate it. This side I'm gonna use to buff it. And you just kind of just rub it back over. And what you're doing is you're pulling all the extra little tiny pieces if they haven't absorbed in. Here's pulling that off. And what's great also about these is these are washable. You can just throw them in your sink, wash them with dish soap and hang them to dry. So of course we are going to fuzz this and what did I forget? My fuzzing cloth. I have no idea what happened to them. Oh, I washed them. That's what happened to them. So let me grab my other fuzzing cloth. I have an extra one right here. Okay. So let me pull that up. We're gonna fuzz this. Of course, we're gonna write the name on the back as we always do. I've used this butterfly before, so I will just be doing um, another mark. Okay, and obviously I always do top and I do a dash. So for this butterfly, because I've already used it once, I'm actually gonna put another mark. So let's get this fuzzed and ready to go. We are just gonna do this in black velvet. I want it to stand out, but not be so dull that you can't see it. However, what another cool design would be is to take this and do it in a light color. You could do it in a light cream color and put it on there or a lighter color and then do the butterflies over top of it if you wanted to. That would be kind of cool looking. There's so many different possibilities, guys, so many, that I absolutely love the fact that you actually can just change it up with the same transfer. You can do multiple different ways of doing butterflies. If you know somebody who loves butterflies, you can even do it on a shirt. You could do so much with this. This doesn't have a lot of silk screen, so it's gonna take a little bit to fuzz. And I just kinda wanna put this in the center, as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you have a little bit of OCD, which is not bad, guys, I have some OCD myself, you can measure it out and make it straight and whatever, but there is a fuzzy on the back of the transfer, there we go. So I'm just gonna, I always put it on and then I look at it and see, okay, that looks good. So we are gonna do black velvet. I will tell you right now, this is going to dye this right here. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. It happens every single time. It does not ruin it as long as your silk screen is clear. Your silk screen can be any color. It can be purple, green, whatever. As long as that silk screen is clear, you are good to go. You don't have to panic that oh my gosh the teal is now grayish color it's okay I promise you it'll be fine as long as that silk screen is clear of debris you can reuse this over and over and over and over okay so don't panic don't freak out the sooner you get it into you know under water to wash it the less it's gonna do it but with our new paste pigment colors it just happens. It happens every time. I don't want you to panic and freak out and think, well, that's ruined. It's not. I promise. Okay? Promise, promise, promise. I have some that are dyed red or pinkish color, and I still use them, and they turn out fine. And the pink does not come through. Does not come through. So it's not like it is going to transfer that next color over. As long as that silk screen is clear, you're good. Oh my God, I love it. Love it. Even though there's a couple spots that bled a little bit because the transfer wasn't completely down, I love it because it looks like print, right? It looks like old print. And you know how old print had that a couple spots that were gobby, you know, they had the gobs of the ink. That's what it looks like to me, and I love it. Love, love, love. So, I'm going to get this to dry. 
And then we're going to move on to the watercolor paper. I'm going to wax that too. I've never waxed um, paper before. I just, I've never been a paper crafter, but if you are, you can totally make cards and stuff with our transfers. It is awesome. Okay, so there is that. But do you guys see the little spots that kind of look a little bit, um, like the press kind of just messed it up. I love it. I love that. So, okay, so this, I want to make sure that this is completely dry before I wax it because I don't want the wax to pull up the color. I'm just making sure that it's dry all the way through and it totally is. Okay, so this is going to be the fun part, except that spot that I just stuck my finger in right there. This is going to be the fun part. Okay, so we are going to wax this. Wax. <laughs> like, where did I set my wax? Right here. Um, and we are going to then chalk the butterfly. Nope, not with my hair in it. I have my hair attached to that. And you can totally see the difference from the spots that I've waxed and the spots that I haven't. You can see it big time. So if you ever want to do like your own crafts, like your own, um, Get, or like cards, make cards out for people. Totally can do that using chalk. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute. I am not going to fuzz this transfer, and the reason why I'm not gonna fuzz it is because I've already used it once, so I'm not gonna fuzz it to put it down on the paper because I kind of want it to be as sticky as I can get it. So we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna sit the butterfly down. Just wanna make sure it's down nice and tight. So we are going to take our black velvet again. Let me quickly wash off this because I don't wanna make it so that anything, because dry paste does not work well with new paste unless you're doing layers, which we're not doing. <laughs> so I just wanna make sure that that is clean. It doesn't have to be completely clean because obviously we're using the same color. So I'm just gonna go over top of the butterfly. Now obviously we have a couple different butterflies on this that you can choose from. So if you don't like this one, you want more of the orange, then I would go with one that's got more or less silk screen than this one. This one's got a lot of silk screen. It's mostly silk screen. I just want to pull all the extra up, put it all back in that paste jar because paste lasts a long time. Okay, so there's the butterfly. I think that looks awesome. So we're gonna dry that. Of course, we're gonna get the paste off of our fingers. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to cut the butterfly out and we are gonna take the butterfly and stick it on the box frame, which is gonna be really, really cool. So let's get this dry. I love it, I think it looks really cool. Now, obviously, if you wanted to cut this out with like an X-Acto knife, you could. I don't have an X-Acto knife here on my table. I don't even actually know where my X-Acto knife is. Because I almost cut myself every single time I use it. So I'm actually going to use my box cutter. It's a razor blade, too. So I'm going to use that. Or you can use scissors. Whichever one you want to do. Let's see. Do we want to do scissors? Hmm. Let's do scissors. Let's just cut it out with scissors for right now. I'm just going to cut what I've done with the watercolor first. 
just to have that. And of course I'm gonna recycle the rest of this paper because that's what I do. Okay, so I could take my box cutter. I need to find my exacto knife, guys. And I'm just gonna kinda go around the butterfly. Not super, I don't wanna go super close to it. I'm gonna go close enough that it looks more like a butterfly, obviously. And then we can trim it up. That's why I have this heat healing mat here. So I can do projects like this. I got kind of close to the butterfly bottom down here. That's okay. I can feel the wax on this paper, so you definitely can feel that wax. See how it's like, I'm already cutting it, it's coming off. Mainly, I'm doing it with this because, one, I kind of want the detail of the, the butterfly where I can kind of get the um, antenna so it looks like an actual butterfly. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit, guys, I promise. It is totally worth doing this. Obviously, if I had an X-Acto knife, it'd be a little bit easier, but I don't. I don't even know where it is, as weird as that is. I know I have one. It's just a matter of finding it. And obviously we can trim it up a little bit if you don't like it that close, or maybe you want it a little bit closer. The more you do, the more trimmed up, you know, that you can do it. It's all up to you, however you want to do it. I just want to make sure that the butterfly looks more like a real butterfly. FYI, this is killing my shoulders. <laughs> but, it will be worth it in the end. <laughs> If anybody has been following me on social media, um, you know that obviously I have an issue with my shoulders. Um, but I am going to physical therapy, so that does help a lot. Kind of just taking it off here. All right, that's part of the butterfly. It's actually hurting my neck more than it's hurting my shoulders. But that's what ice is for. Okay. That's what ice is for. Things we do for our art. <laughs> I love what I do. I love every bit of it. I love even the aches and pains that come along with it. All right. So this butterfly has been cut out of the paper, which is super, super cool. So I'm gonna kind of bend it just ever so slightly because I just want it bent a little bit. And then to put it on here, I have some of these little sticky tabs that I have done um, with other projects, but I'm looking actually for, here it is, I have this craft it's a craft um, sticky material. So I'm actually gonna go on the box frame itself and then I'm gonna put some on the butterfly. It's like a little blue dot. We're gonna stick it right here. And, 
Ta-da! We got it, guys. It's on. There's our little butterfly. And I did notice there's a little tiny spot right here that's driving me crazy. Okay, it's just a little spot. So, let me lift this up real quick. Thank you guys for staying with me. I know I've been on here for just a little bit. But there is our etched butterfly. How cute is that, right? And then if you wanted to add the other other butterflies, you totally could. I love it. I think it turned out super cute. I can't wait to put this on my shelf by my front door. I love it. So yes, you can paint with our chalk paste. You can do it on paper. So if you've never done chalk couture before, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it is amazing. And you're gonna be shocked at all of the things that you can do with it. You can do it on walls, you can do it on glass, you can do it on so many things. And you can etch with our transfers as well. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Shawnee. I love it, I think it looks really cute. I had an idea in my head and I wanted to do it. I've seen other people do it and I was like, I want this. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a fabulous night. I will catch you all here tomorrow, hopefully at 7, not earlier than that. Um, and you guys, if you are not a designer, please click the S-H-A-R-E button and spread the love for me. And if you would love to get your hands on all of this stuff that we did here today, I will have a cart link added to this video. If you want to see the finished project, you have to be a member of my VIP group. And if you are not, comment VIP below and I will get you guys that link so you guys can see all the finished projects. You guys have a great night. Stay dry and warm or cool wherever you are. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye guys.